Okay, let's go on to unit level cost. This one's a little more trickier. So unit level cost, is that material handling, supplies used to prov provide service, production workers based on quantity produced, or product advertising? Remember, unit level based on production. Bill says advertising, interesting. Anybody it's else? D. Ola says C, based on quantity produced. Peter says C. Okay, so this one is probably batch. Supplies used to provide services. I don't know what the heck that one would be. Supplies used. Production word based on quantity produced. Product advertising. I'm guessing that's more of a customer. Let's see what the answer is. Product advertising, well done. Who said that? Did you say that, Jill? Good guess. Not a guess, that was good. Yeah, I also said that as well. Did you? Good. Yeah. So unit level cost, because you advertise, it, um, yeah, it increases the, the unit level based, based on your final product. Very good. Very good. Okay, I'll let you guys go through the rest here. Get some practice. Answers are basically just unhide it. Um, we're at 650, so what we'll take a 10 minute break. Everybody read self-study problem 7.1. I'll check what page that's on. Does anybody have a page number? Page. All right. Page 312. 312, thank you. So I want everybody to read it. Basically, if you have time, set it up and we'll go over it. And this should give you a good overall view of calculating using ABC costing. And we'll pick this up at seven o'clock. Can everybody read this? You want me to make it bigger? Everybody can read it. Whoops, I misread the question. That's okay, Peter. Tola, you can read it. Everybody can read this. So again, page, where's that page number? 312. And we'll take it up at seven o'clock.
Um, Constantine. Yes, sir. Um, Tolu got kicked out of the Zoom, so she's back in and waiting. Just letting you know, she just called me. Yeah, does anybody know how to dislodge that waiting feature? I think that's a new feature on Zoom. I noticed that. Um, if not, I'll do a quick Google search. <laughs> I think that's a new feature on Zoom. It's the first time I've seen this admitting feature. Anyways, they should be in now. Let me know if anybody else is on waiting, because I, like, I don't have the whole list in front of me, so I can't tell who's waiting. Everybody should be in now. Thanks. For those who um, got in late, go to page 312. We're going through the self-study problem. We're going to be taking it up in about five to six minutes.
Okay, for anyone joining us, we are going over self-study problem, page 312 in your textbook. Uh, welcome back. Let's, let's go over this question. So the Fallon Company manufactures a variety of handcrafted bed frames. Companies manufacturing activities and related data for the current year as follows. So here's our activities. So we've got material handling, we've got cutting, we've got assembly, and then we've got wood staining. So these are our estimated costs. Now, these are the drivers that they've identified. Number of parts for material handling. Number of machine hours for cutting. Direct labor hours for assembly. <clears throat> number of frames stained for wood staining. And then they've got estimated volume. So 800,000 parts for material handling. 40,000 hours for cutting, 150,000 hours for assembly, and 60,000 frames for wood staining. So before I move on, what should you guys do? You've got your activity, you've got your allocation base, you've got your cost driver. So you should be able to calculate what based on this information. Can anyone um, answer that? What can you do now? That, that, that cost by unit? Correct. Calculate your overhead rates. So that's the first thing I do right away. So over here is my overhead rate for material handling. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So parts. Our estimated cost is 400,000 divided by our expected driver or volume, which is 800,000 parts, 50 cents, basically 50 cents per part. So What's our rate for cutting? Basically, estimated cost divided by your cost driver. 1.2 million divided by 40,000 hours gives you $30. Your assembly, your cost is 3 million divided by 150,000 hours, $20 per direct labor hour. So that's direct labor hour. This is machine hours. This is parts. This per part. This one, number of frames stained, 60,000 frames. Your estimated cost, 1.3 million, $22 per frame. Any question on calculating those rates? So let's move on. Now you've got the rates. You're halfway there. <clears throat> so you got two styles of bed frames are produced in July. A wood frame needing fewer direct labor hours and a metal frame that required no staining activities. So metal frame, no staining. Remember that. So direct labor paid at $25 per hour. Okay, so I put that on the side, $25 per direct labor hour. Quantities, direct material costs, other data to follow. So basically, they give you the wood frames, they give you the metal frames. Total units produced, wood frames 5,000, metal frames 1,000. You've got your direct material costs for both wood and metal. Here's your machine hours. 5,500, here's your number of parts, 100,000 parts for wood, only 10,000 for metal, 
And then you've got your direct labor hours, 6,000 for wood, 3,000 for metal. So question A, compute the ABC cost allocation rates and then calculate the total manufacturing cost and the unit cost for wood and metal. So we, so we already calculated the overhead rates up here. So now we want to do, we want to basically cost our products. So where do we, what's the first cost? Direct materials. So what's the direct material cost for wood frame? Where do I get that number? 600,000. Anybody? So remember, we're costing out a product. Costing a product. What makes up the cost of a product? Remember, direct materials, direct labor, and then your manufacturing overhead. It's from chapter five, right? So our first step, okay, you have to start with the direct materials, right? So wood frames, where do I get the 600,000? It's given, it's out there on a direct material. Up here, right? Yes. 600,000, good. So metal frames, it's given as well. Um, you said chapter four, why does it say chapter five there? Was it chapter four? Well, is that what you said? Yeah, what, what chapter was job costing? Was it chapter five or chapter four? Job costing? Hold on, let me grab my textbook here. It's chapter five. Yeah, chapter five is job costing. So in chapter five, remember we talked about direct materials, direct labor and manufacturing overhead, right? Okay, who can tell me the next cost? What's what's after direct materials? Direct labor. Right. So what's the direct labor cost for wood frames? Somebody give me a number. Six thousand. Six thousand. How much? Six thousand. So we got six thousand. Anybody else? Anybody else got another number? One twenty-five. Okay, so we got. We're going to write this down. So we got six thousand, hundred twenty-five thousand. Yeah, because it's times twenty-five per hour. Anybody else? <clears throat> oh, I totally did that wrong. I did five thousand. My bad. Oh no problem. So it was 150, us, my apologies. Remember they gave us $25 for direct labor hour here? Yeah. Then you have to calculate it based on what? Your direct, direct labor paid per hour. $25. Yeah, I, I corrected myself. I did machine hours by accident. Oh, okay. Right here. 6,000 times 25, right? 3,000 times 25. So let's go down here. 150,000 for wood frame, 75,000 for metal. So 3,000 times 25, 6,000 times 25. So now what's next? Now we have to estimate our overhead, right? So we calculated the rates. So what's material handling? What's our material handling? cost for wood frame. So what's the material handling? Somebody give me a cost. We're calculating wood frame material handling cost. We've got point, we got 50 cents per part. What's my number for material handling? 
2,500. How much? 2,500. 2,500, that's it? Could be, I don't know. Oh, I just gave it away, damn. 50,000, how did I get 50,000? So remember, it's number of parts. So material handling's number of parts. I've got 50 cents per part, 50 cents times 100,000. And then for metal frames, I got 10,000 parts times 50 cents. Make sense? So 50,000 there, 5,000 there. All right, should be a piece of cake the rest of the way, right? So let's do wood frames cutting. So what's my wood frame cutting cost? Who can give me a number? Wood frame cutting cost. So wood frame cutting is based on what? Machine hours. No. Give it two, two it machine hours. Thirty dollars per machine hour. So thirty times what? For wood frame. So we got a number. Good. Lola says two hundred twenty thousand. Let's check it out. So cutting. Ooh, one hundred fifty thousand. What went wrong there, Lola? So we have 5,000 machine hours. So remember, cutting is based on machine hours, right? 30 times five, 150,000. And what's for metal frames? We've got 500 machine hours times the $30. So cutting 15,000. Nice try, Gola. Let's see if you get the next one. What's the next one? Assembly. Now, everyone should get this. I want a cost for assembly for wood frame. What is it? Somebody other than Pola, give me a number. Is this for staining? Yep. Do you have a number for me? Is it 110,000? So we've got 110,000. I want one more. Anybody else? One more person. Give me a number. Terrence says 100. 5,000? Right. Oh, we've got another? 5,000 times 22 is 110,000. 110,000. Good. Peter's got 110,000 as well. Let's check it out. Assembly is 120,000. So what? Let's check it out here. So assembly, $20 per direct labor hour. So 20 times, what's a direct labor hour? 6,000. 20 times 6,000. 120,000. Isn't it per frame? Yep, yeah, right here, 120,000. So wood frame is 6,000 direct labor hours, right? So assembly is what? $20 per direct labor hour. 20 times six, right? 120,000. Okay, somebody do the metal frame. What is the assembly for metal frame? What's the cost? Assembly is $20 per direct labor hour. What is the assembly cost for metal frame? $22. No. Nope. $20 times what? There we go, Terrence, 60K. So 3,000 metal frames, it takes 3,000 direct labor hours. Your direct labor rate for assembly is $20. 20 times 3,000, 60,000. 
All right, let's final one with staining. So this is a bit of a trick question. What is the wood staining cost for wood frames? So wood staining, $22 per frame. What is our per frame cost? The per frame is your finished product, right? Over here. So somebody give me a number for wood frames. 22 times what? 5,000 units. Very good. 110, good. What about metal? It's zero. Excellent. So wood stain 100, metal does not have any wood staining. It'll be zero. So now we've got our total costs. So, sorry, how was it that? Sorry? Why is that zero for metal frames? Um, because wood staining only applies to wood frames. You don't wood stain metal, right? Bit of a trick question. So metal uh, frames, there's no staining. You oh, okay. Metal frame. So we add them all up. That's our total cost for our wood frame, 1.180 million. Here's our total cost for metal frames. How do we get the per unit cost? 1.180 million divided by what? How do I get my per unit cost here, 236? Don't rush. Everybody don't rush all at once. Look at your total units produced, right? This is your total cost. 6,000. Total cost. Should we divide by 6,000? Oh, um. So here's my units produced. This is my total cost now. 5,000. 236. 236, how do I calculate 236? Uh, 1 million 180 divided by 5,000. Excellent. There you go. What, what is it for metal frames? Three fifty-five. Divided by what? 355,000 divided by 1,000. Good. 355. Now let's go to, oh. Now, let's suppose non-manufacturing activities such as product design were analyzed and allocated. For the wood frame at $10 each and the metal frame at 15. So I take those out, $10 for the wood and 15 for the metal. These are product design. These are additional costs. And then we've got other non-manufacturing activities such as distribution, marketing, and customer service. So these support costs were $50 per wood frame. So wood is $50 and $80 for metal. So now we want to calculate the product cost per unit, including these non-manufacturing costs. What's the first step? So now I've got wood frames, metal frames. I've got my product costs. Now I want to add in some design costs and I want to add in some support costs. So basically, we want to grab the total cost from wood frames and metal frames, right? So now I want to calculate my product design cost. How do I calculate it? What's the product design cost for wood frames? Good. 
<laughs> Would you multiply the ten dollars by the number of uh, units, so five thousand? You'd get fifty thousand. Perfect. Thank you. That's fifty thousand. What about metal frames? Fifteen dollars times one thousand. Now I get my support costs, same deal. $50 is worth 50 times 5,000, 250, 80 times 1,000, gives me 80,000. Total product cost now is 1.480 million, 450,000. Again, we take the per unit, just divided by the units here. So that basically gives you a rundown. We started with the activity. We were given the estimated costs. These were our manufacturing overhead costs. They gave us the estimated volume based on our cost drivers. The drivers were the number of parts, machine hours, direct labor hours, the number of frames. We quickly estimated our overhead rates over here for part per machine hour, <clears throat> per direct labor hour, per frame, based on our activities. We then had our final product. So we had a, some direct material costs. We, they're directly traceable to the product. So we just brought those forward. We calculated a direct labor based on a $25 direct labor hour, which was given over here. And then we used our overhead rates calculated by our drivers or activity levels to get to our total product costs. And then we added some support costs and design costs as well, which added to the total cost of the wood frames and the metal frames. So this is a good basic example. Let's, um, let's do another one here. I think we can go back to these, just some quick, um, more um, theory questions. We can come back to those later. Ah, let's go over this. Let me just move this over. Okay, so basically we wanna identify whether the following costs are organizational sustaining activities, facility sustaining activities, customer sustaining activity, product sustaining activity, batch level activity, or unit level activity. Let's start with our receptionist salary. And let's, let's do numbers here. One, two, three, four, five, or six. What do you guys think for receptionist salary? Is it an organization sustaining activity? Is it a facility sustaining? Is it a customer sustaining? How is the organization? So Jill says organization. One. Anybody else? Jeremy says one as well. Anybody say why do you guys think it's an organizational strategy? I think it's organizational because you probably wouldn't um, allocate it to a product. Maybe not easily allocate the product. That's not... I mean, receptionist is answering calls. How's that related? Or how can you trace that directly 
to a product, unless you're selling telephones. Okay, let's try this one, financial forecasting software. Organizational, facility, customer, product. So financial forecasting software. You could be estimating sales with that. Uh, Misker says two, facility system. Okay, anybody else? Parents, one and three, two, one, three. So organizational, because your financial software could be used across the organization. <clears throat> and then you put customer. So maybe if you're estimating customer sales, that could easily be a three. You know what? It could also be a four. Maybe I'm estimating product sales as well. So as mentioned, depending on what the financial forecasting software is being used, it could impact multiple activity levels. More than likely, this one's probably a one and possibly a four if you're using more than likely, it's a one in four. You might be using financial forecasting to estimate product sales as well. And then if you're using an ERP system, it's across the organization. Let's try this one. Photocopy matching rental. I don't know. I think I copied that wrong. Oh, before you go on, can I ask a question about the last one? Yeah. So in the situation where that you there there's multiple um, hierarchies that are possible, yeah. Um, what would be the best one to choose, or does it matter really? Like if we were going to allocate those costs, I guess you don't allocate the costs based on the hierarchy anyways. You base it on the driver. So you do, but sometimes a question will ask you based on which activity is it. Like some questions will ask you to divide it by the different activities. Read the background of the question. Let's say it says, I'm using financial forecasting sales to estimate my product sales. Right away, you know it's related to product. But if it doesn't say I'm estimating product sales, more than likely it's organizational. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so this should say photocopy machine rental. What does that sound like? Again, think about what am I using that photocopier for? Karen says six. Hmm. Why do you say six? Just out of interest. Anybody else? The rental and products used for batch size. Rental and products used for batch size. Rental and products used for batch size. I mean, that could be a possibility. Anybody else? Let's come back to photocopy rental. Let's do janitorial service. Cola, two for which one? This one? For photocopy? Photocopy, sorry. So you're guessing two, so I'll put a two in there as well. Okay, let's go to janitorial service. Can you pinpoint janitorial service anywhere? Not really, more than likely. So you put two, oh yeah, that's right. I'm guessing it could be either one or two because your, your facility is being sustained by your janitorial service 
your janitorial services across the organization. I mean, they could be sweeping, I mean, offering services within your executive suites down to your facilities. I agree, one and two. Here's, a, here's one, audit manager salary. What drives an audit manager's salary? Organization. I mean, which is, um, which is why. Anybody else? That's a possibility. How is an audit manager paid? By the number of audits he completes. So what number of audits completed? Which one of these activities sounds based on number of audits? Number six, good tour. More than likely it's six. Unit level activity, number of audits completed. Good. Long distance telephone charges. Customer sales calls. Yeah, that's a possibility. If you're doing customer sales calls with long distance and it's directed to customer sales calls, it definitely could be free. Anybody else? What happens if I'm not making customer sales calls? Could it be organization as well? Yes. Total says three as well. Now, could it be organizational as well? Yes or no? My receptionist could be calling, could be doing a non-sales activities call. So probably could be one as well, right? What other one could you? How about maybe I'm making a product call? You guys think product might be another one that might be applied to LD? I'm phoning long distance to one of our product managers. So basically this one could be four as well. Again, look at what the calls are being used. and tracked. Okay, here's an interesting one. Meal costs for entertaining clients. What do you guys think? Three, customer, definitely. You're taking your customer out for lunch. More than likely, it's a three. Um, here's a good one. Cost for annual golf parties. Now, one is definitely probably, your whole company is probably going to this golf party. But let's say, you're only taking a customer, then it could be three as well, right? Good Tola. Could be one or three. Office supplies, such as paper clips and tablets of paper. Chinudo says two facility. Unless your facility is uh, producing widgets or something. I guess you could use paper. Five, because it's a bunch of papers, like a batch. Oh, somebody says batch, okay. What number is why, why do you say batch? Because it's a collection of, um, of goods or services processed in a process as a group. That's the definition. So like a stack of papers is a batch. 
and paper clips <laughs> and tablets <laughs> in like the S. Much if you're producing paper clips and the company's actually producing office supplies. Again, look at the background. And again, this question is not telling you actually what office supplies this company's producing all and 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 sure is wrong because like uh it says it um those activities occur no matter the number of customers served or products sold like it doesn't consider the number of anything so like that's why i think like five is and not two they're opposite yeah but my argument is if the company doesn't produce office supplies I don't think it would fall under batch level, but if it is producing, anybody else? Does anybody think else think it's batch? If it's if it's office supply, um, that probably going to be um, facilitated because everybody will be using it. That is, they are purchasing it. But if they are producing office supply, then she's probably like, I think that just. I'm guessing it could be one as well, an organization sustaining activity. Also could be a facility sustaining. I'm not so sure on the batch, but we'll leave it on there. Um, annual subscription for income tax regula regulations. Who would be using that information? One, organization. More than likely it is one. Anyways, we've got some, these are the recommended solutions here. Have a look when you guys have a chance. Notice 40 copy rental machine. One could be organizational, could be product, could be batch, could be unit level as well. So good point. Somebody did bring in six there. Genitorial, they've basically got it one. Number of audits, number six. So long distance charges, they've got one. Product sustaining in relation to the product. They've also got it under unit level activity as well. Meals, so they've got three, uh, yeah, product sustaining. Any, um, if you're entertaining anybody like a product manager, could fall in that category. So golf is basically lumped as one. Office supplies, we've got one, four, five. Good, we do have batch in there. Good call. We had one, two, five. So they had four product sustaining. Product sustaining. I'm not so sure about that one. And then annual prescription one. And if it's related to the product, Obviously, you may have value added tax. So that relates to a product. That's why probably they've got lumped as four as well. So do some practice on these. I think there's a couple more questions you can do on your assigned questions. These just go over the hierarchy levels and what basic activities are related to each one. Um, Oh, well, we've got one here. Match the cost pool to the driver. Let's do this one. Okay, so we've got cost pool is machining, purchasing, inspection, assembly, payroll, a special quick freezing process for food, and laundry in the hospital. So we're going to take the cost driver and match it to the pool. So what's machining? Which cost driver is machining? Is it number of employees, number of parts? Is it kilograms? Uh, Naheb says F, number of machine hours. Everybody agree? Let's put F up there. Purchasing activities. Oh, I can't spell them. Who's got purchasing activities? What letters here? Anybody? We've got an E. 
purchasing number of batches. Okay. Anybody else? Everybody agree with E? Number of invoices, D. D Anybody yeah. else? Is it E or D? So far, I've got an E and D. I need more participation here. We've got a tie here. Anybody else? Chinudo says E. Okay, so we got two E's. Uh, Mr. says D. Two D's and two E's. One more. Let's, let's go with D. Let's put a maybe. Uh, is G part of the second one? Sorry? G? G? So you're saying number of units for purchasing? Um, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm assuming, yes. Okay, so we'll put that as maybe as well. Anybody else? Anybody else for G? So Terrence says G as well. Well, I've got two Gs, but I've got three Ds. Anybody else? Okay, let's leave it at that for now. What about inspection? We've got number of units. What do we got left here? Number of units, number of invoices, number of parts per unit, um, number of employees. Um, is it, uh, can A be part of it? Um, inspection number of employees. Okay. So you say A, anybody else? Let's put that in maybe. Anybody else? Mr. says G, number of units. Okay. Tulip says F. We got tons here. A, G, F. What's F? We already used F up here, machining hours. I think we got to use one per cost pool. But that's fine. I'll put F on there. Yeah, number of batches. So let's, did we use batches yet? We haven't used batches, have we? Okay, anybody else for batches? I've got one for batch. Okay, so let's come back to that one. What about assembly? G, so can it be G. G assembly determined, can be like uh, determined by a number of units produced, could be part of assembly. So we got two Gs. So Jill says G, oh, loop says E, number of batches. Okay, let's put that in the maybe. Oh, Polo says E as well. I'll get gonna have to put G over here. E is now overtaken G. Got two E's, anybody else? So E was saying number of batches for assembly. Okay, we'll come back. What about payroll? A, 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 so that one's pretty, pretty sure that's payroll. That we're pretty sure that's number of employees. Okay, so we'll take A out of here. It's definitely not A here. Special quick freezing process for food. Special quick freezing process for food. And Jill says E. So E is number of batches. Obviously we got some, anybody else? I need one more guess on uh, quick freezing. Nahib says G, so G is number of units, freezing process. So far we've got E and G. E, G. Anybody else? Oh. 
two G's. So let's just put G there for now. I still got an E here. And then laundry in a hospital. That should be pretty, so C. Okay, so let's go. So we're pretty sure about this one. So let's just go over this. So we're pretty sure on this one. And then for payroll, I think we're pretty sure it's A, number of employees. Um, number of parts per unit. We even say B. Let's leave that one. Number of invoices. I'm pretty confident that's D. Um, what's left here? So machining. Machining is machine hours, pretty confident that F. Take F out of there. So F is definitely not there. So what are we left here? Number of parts per unit. Number of batches. And then number of units. So inspection, we said G or E. So is it number of batches for inspection? So don't forget it's a finished product. So when we inspect the product is finished. I'm almost leaning on G. What does everybody think? E or G for inspection? I think G would be best. I've got one more G. And then chat says G. Well, let's go with G. So G is, let's fill that up. So we're left with assembly and quick freezing process. And what are we left with? Number of parts per unit. I'm guessing, so we've got number of parts per unit. We don't even, we haven't even checked off B here. Number of parts per unit, wouldn't that assemble, wouldn't you assemble parts? Wait, I think assembly could be, could be part on, um, assembly could be part of number of parts per unit. So B, right? Yes. So G we already used, it's not there anymore. So that's what I'm guessing too. That's B. What's left? So number of batches, special quick freezing process for food. And somebody pick number of batches too. So that's E. There we go. I don't know if I got the solution this one. I'll get the solution just to make sure. So I'll get the solution and post it, but this is what it should be right here. Let us, okay, final question of the night. So let's do, let's do the same thing. Let's take a 10 minute break. I want everybody to go to 7.26. Seven point two six. So this is a good, basically ABC testing. We're going to do a comparison between traditional and ABC. The company is called Yonix. They produce two products, MBR and MBK. Um, so Yonix allocates overhead budget based on direct labor hours. We've got overhead spending at 400,000. 
Because the county realizes that there are some differences on how the resources are being used. We've got two components, MBR, MBX. She determines that overhead is caused by testing and inspections. Testing and inspections. So we've got some, we've got testing inspections, 120,000, machine setup, 80,000. Plant maintenance, I mean, machine stamping, 160. Plant maintenances, plant of maintenance, 40,000. Yonix estimates the following activities related to overhead costs. So these are activities. There's the cost drivers. So let's go over this question. 7.26, we'll take it up in eight o'clock. And we should be able to run through this in the next 10, 15 minutes, and then you guys can write the quiz on process costing. Sounds good? So basically the question, we're gonna use the ABC cost hierarchy. We're gonna assign the cost, compute the number of overhead assigned to each product. First, we're gonna use traditional costing. Then we're gonna do ABC costing. And then there's a question, what product is overcosted, and what product is undercosted? This will give you a good overall view and comparison between ABC costing and traditional. So let's take this up in 10 minutes. Sound good? Okay, see you guys in eight o'clock.
So tonight's quiz is going to be 10 questions. Um, I don't think you guys will have any problems. You'll have 30 minutes to complete it. So let's run through this quickly. Does everybody agree we run through this question quickly? Give you an extra 10 minutes to do a little pre-study. Does that work for everyone? Yep, fine. Okay, so let's just quickly run through this. All right. So basically the question, two products, MBR, MBX. So our activity levels are set up. It's given to you in the question. Testing inspections, machine setup, machine stamping, plant maintenance. Then they give you the cost drivers, number of testing and inspection, number of setups, number of machine hours, direct labor. And then they break it down by product. So you got 400 for MBR, 400 for MBX, 120 and 80 and so on. So the first thing, and they also give you the overhead cost, right? So what's the first step? I'm looking at this question, what do I need to calculate? They're giving me, these are the overhead costs right here. So testing inspections, 120,000. I take it down, 120,000. Machine setup, 80,000. Overhead rate. Good, Tola. Yes, we want to eventually calculate the overhead rate, right? So they're giving us the overhead costs. So let's, let's create a column called overhead cost. Bring down these costs, 160,000 plant maintenance. Sorry, 40,000 plant maintenance, 160,000 machine stamping. There's our total, 400,000. We need to allocate 400,000. Like Tola said, got to calculate the overhead rates. Who can give me the overhead rate for testing and inspections? You guys should be experts. Boom, boom, get those calculators out. Is it 150? Let's check. Good, 150, awesome. Machine setup, overhead rate. Who's got an overhead rate machine setup? Terrence, overhead rate, machine setup. Is it 400? 400, good. Machine stamping, overhead rate. 4. Good. Flat maintenance, overhead rate. Good. There you go. So now you've got your overhead rates. Now, question A asks, use the cost hierarchy to classify each activity. We went through this. Basically, testing inspection is batch. Machine setup is batch. Now, I have trouble with this one. Machine stamping unit level. I kind of I can't wrap my head around why machine stamping would be unit level, unless I guess machine stamping would be the final, it's the final product. I don't understand why that's unit level. Maybe that's a question mark for me, plant maintenance, facility sustaining. So we're gonna do now traditional costing method where we use only one overhead rate, which is the direct labor. What is our one overhead rate using traditional cost? We have to allocate 400,000 in cost <clears throat> using overhead rate based on direct labor hours. 
what is our overhead rate using traditional costing? Here's a clue. Your total direct labors are 4,000. Here's your direct labor hours, 4,000. So what's my overhead rate? 100. Let's check. 4,000 divided by 400,000. Perfect. 100 direct labor hours. Now, let's calculate our overhead rates starting using activity rate and um, the drivers for MBR. So, the traditional. So I've got 150,000 and 250. Oh, sorry. I, I forgot one step. We've got to now apply that direct labor hour to get to assign the cost to the each product. So we have to go back here. MBR is 1,500, right? Direct labor hours times 100. 150,000, then we got 2,500 times 100, 250. So now we've assigned overhead rate based on traditional costing for each of the products. 150,000, 250, that gives us 400,000 for traditional. Now we want to compute the amount of overhead for each product using ABC. So now we're going to use these activity levels, testing, machine setup, machine stamping, plant maintenance. We're going to use those overhead rates. So what's, let's do MBR first. I think we got, yeah. So we've got MBX overhead rate, sorry, MBX, and then we got MBR. So all we're gonna do, take the MBX, we're gonna have testing inspections, machine setup, machine stamping and plant maintenance. So MBX, testing and inspections. Our overhead rates 400. Sorry, testing inspection overhead rate is 150. And MBX testing and inspections is 400. 400 times 150. So basically, 400 times 150 times 400. I think that's right. Number of machine hours times that. And then direct labor hours times that. 60,000. <clears> Machine setup, 120. MBX, 120. Oh, I'm taking the wrong ones here. What are we doing here? We're doing MBX. What's MBX? 400. I've got these um, reversed here. MBR 480, 15,000, 2,500. Okay, so that should be MB dash R. That should be MD dash S. There we go. So MBR is 400 times 150, 60,000. And then we've got the 32,000, 60,000, 25,000. So all we're doing, taking the overhead rates that we calculated and apply them to the number of testing inspections for MBR and then MBX. 
essentially, you're going to get 223,000 for MBX, 177 for MBR. Now, if we quickly do a comparison, traditional, we got 150,000 and 250. We calculated that up here. Or is it right here? MBR 150, 250, that's the traditional. And then ABC, we calculated 177 for ABC, for MBR. And then for MBX, we calculated 223. So you notice the variance. We underreported traditional by 27,000 and we overreported MBX. As long as our drivers are accurate, which, which, um, which do you guys think ABC is more accurate based, as long as these drivers are correct, using traditional, we've under allocated and we've over allocated our products. So what's the consequences of that? When I'm selling my product, I've probably, I'm selling, so if I sell MBR, I'm probably underpricing myself here and then overpricing myself in MBX using traditional. So what does ABC achieve? Better pricing, more competitive pricing, more importantly, better matching of resources and better management decision-making because you're actually applying that overhead right you're applying more accurate overhead rates as long as your drivers are driving the cost. Make sense? Now, I know I went through this quickly. I will be posting this lesson in the dashboard for you guys to review. But any questions? I know I went through this quickly. Any questions on the calculations? You guys are good? Okay, I know everyone's studying for their process costing. So um, take eight minutes. Let me know when you guys are in the quiz. Um, quiz will begin at 10, sorry, 8.20. It'll end at 8.50, 30 minutes, 10 questions. You guys should have no problems as far as, far as time. Okay, everybody put their cams when they get on, please. Thank you. <laughs>